Are you looking for better ways to keep a client updated as to the status of their projects or maybe what deals you're working on or perhaps the contact information for your team? Well, building a client portal or a space that's just one place where they can go to get that information is a great way to do that. You can do that with no code tools like Softer, but what happens when you already have that information in a tool like HubSpot? Well, thankfully, now you can bring those two together in this no code environment and actually make it so that your client can log in, see that information confidentially, and you can also use the information that's already in HubSpot to power some of that interface. I'm gonna show you how to do that in this video. So as I mentioned before, you already have some of this data set up in your HubSpot, or as we go through this process, you may wanna think about what is the data that I want to pull into my client portal, and then maybe what properties or what information do I need to make sure is complete over in my HubSpot environment as well. So here we've got the homepage of, of software. You can see what they're talking about, this new arrival of HubSpot as a data source. But I'm gonna log in and show you a little bit of the environment here, because the first thing you wanna do when you set up this software account to make it possible to do that client portal with HubSpot, you want to set up your data source and HubSpot's gonna be one of those that you choose. So we're on the left-hand side here down at the bottom, we can say, I wanna go ahead and set my data sources. And as you'll notice here, I've got two data sources set up. We use Airtable and we also use HubSpot. Now you might actually be able to do this without Airtable. I'm just gonna show you an instance of how we pulled one other data source into this, but HubSpot's where we're pulling the deals and the ticket information that we would put in our client portal. There's a lot of other ways to use this information from HubSpot into Softer. You can pull in things like contacts, you can pull in companies, but again, we're gonna walk through more of that here in this specific video. So let's go back to our area. We already connected these two. We're gonna go back to the homepage and you'll notice that I already set up a client portal that I can show you. So we're gonna pull this up here and just walk through how this came together with the HubSpot data source, and then we'll kind of back you up and walk through that more in terms of setting it up yourself. So here we've got, when we set up the portal, we've got a homepage where people would, like if I'm the client, I'm gonna log in here. So the information is actually behind a password protected wall. And then the list view here is actually where this specific client portal page would live. So what this is, is this is just a conglomerate of the different modules that are available in a no code tool like Softer. And then I can choose what one of those modules is dynamic, pulling data from HubSpot to then present it here in this interface. So as I've got it set up, we've got this specific view here that's actually pulling information from HubSpot deals. And then we've got this section, second section that is pulling the outstanding tickets for this client into this portal section. We've got a couple of sections that are called static, and those are just information you can put inside of that portal that might be beneficial to your client. Again, think about client experience. We've got FAQs, and then down at the bottom, you'll notice that we've got, you can submit a new ticket, and then also meet your team. So what this looks like when we're actually examining this data over from HubSpot is you'll notice when I hover over this, I see that this is a list here. I can actually rename this module to be, let's say the um, deals in progress. This is just gonna be what shows on the internal. The uh, clients are not gonna see this name. And then you notice here, I've got the data source as that HubSpot portal that I just mentioned. And then the object that I'm choosing to display is going to be deals. So obviously we've got a lot of other options here, these five different objects, but we're gonna use deals because that's the way we're presenting this information to our clients. And then I've got conditional filters. So this is how you'd actually filter to get the information specific for this client. So we've got the deal name contains softer. So we've got two deals in the system that contain the word softer. As you're working inside of this environment, if you actually want to see what this looks like, the, the uh, proof mode here is not going to show you accurate data. You need to click on this preview button up here at the top that will actually show you the specific data that will be for that client portal based on the criteria I just told you about. So that's gonna be how that breaks down. If you go down here to our outstanding tickets, same sort of thing, we're connected to the HubSpot data source here. And then we've got tickets as a thing that are showing. And then to sort by the tickets for just this softer account, um, we're gonna actually look at the HubSpot company ID and that is the thing that's going to be used to source this. So again, if you look at all of the different values you can have here, um, we can actually choose to sort or we can choose to filter by the associated company ID, if you happen to have business units, if you use categories in your tickets, all of that, again, we've got a lot of different opportunities here to make this even more powerful to get the data that you might need uh, inside this client portal. So that's what this looks like. These sections here are again, what they call um, static sections. So if I wanted to add a section here, all I do is simply hover over the static and I can add things like feature grids. So let's say that you wanted to say, here's the things that people love about working with us. 
Um, you know, let's say that you're gonna put together some uh, what's new in your service package. That might be an option as well. Now that you see what this looks like, I'm gonna take you back to the first step and we're actually gonna talk about setting this up for the first time because to get here is gonna be a little bit of a step forward. So let's go ahead and jump back to our homepage and then we're gonna publish those changes, that's fine. And um, <laughs> we're gonna jump over here. All right, so we're gonna click on new application. And from here, we're just gonna start with a blank application. And if we do this, it's gonna suggest the amount of pages that I might need. And that home page is what I just showed you where they log in. We're gonna create a list of the information I just mentioned. We're not gonna have a list details page, but if you did, you could have a deal where it actually showed all the information on there, depending on how many different fields you have filled out inside of HubSpot. You could choose to have a form where people can talk, contact you. We're gonna to toggle that off as well. And then we have sign up, sign in, uh, set, set your password, and then also user profile. So let's go ahead and click create application. While that's working to create your application, you do wanna go ahead and name this. This would be a client portal for a specific client in this case. So we're gonna name this software client portal. And then it's gonna give us this, again, these are just recommendations of starting points. So if we didn't wanna use all of these sections here, we can just delete them. So I'm gonna get rid of this one. Um, I might choose to, to change this to say, um, welcome to software client portal. And then each one of these buttons is going to be um, how you navigate through the entire portal itself. So the first thing we wanna do is make sure that people have an opportunity to sign up. So this would be the menu that they see. Again, some of these things don't make sense. So we're gonna go ahead and get rid of a couple of those. We're going to delete this and we're gonna delete this and delete this. We just wanna sign up and sign in. This little over here on the left will show us, this is what shows to a non-logged in user. And then below, this is what shows to a logged in user. So for someone who's not logged in, they need to see a sign up button or they need to see a login button. So we're gonna go ahead and add our login button here. We've got sign up and then the action is going to go to a page where they can sign up for an account. And then we're gonna add a button that is actually going to be a login if you are a current user. And we're going to click on that, click to open a page. And when we click on to open the page, when they log in, they're gonna go right to that list view. And we can actually rename that page. So let's go back over here. We're gonna rename our page to, we're gonna call this, um, let's see here, portal view. And let's go ahead and save. Okay, so that takes care of that. And let's go ahead and head to that portal view and we'll talk about how to customize this. So as you can see here, the information that's preloaded just kind of gives you an idea of what to expect. Now, this is gonna be possible if you happen to have images in your deals, which in most cases you're probably not going to do. So from a HubSpot perspective, we're going to add a block and we're going to do a list with horizontal cards. And here again is where we would select the data source as HubSpot. And then the objects that you wanna show, again, we're gonna show deals. And then it's going to make sure that gives you some check boxes here within the application to make sure you're getting the page set up correctly. Now, this is where you'd add those conditional filters. And then you can also um, choose to, if you want to um, go to this content tab, if you don't want a search bar, you can turn that off. If you want to add a title and a subtitle, you can turn that here. And then if you don't want to have these tags, tags are also driven by property fields in HubSpot. So you can go back to this here and we can actually choose to um, delete the tags, which look like these things here. So I'm gonna delete this tag um, and then we're gonna go ahead and preview this. Okay, so this is what our current um, environment looks like. And the reason for this is we don't have any HubSpot data clarified from a conditional perspective, but this is how this would show up if you were um, uh, connecting so now like I showed you in the demo, we're gonna show the deals that are just meant to be associated with software. So we're gonna look for the company name, associated company name is or contains software. And we'll click on add. And that's one way to do it. Or you could say that the deal name contains software as well. So you have to come up with your own naming conventions and the way that you're gonna have this data shake out, but that's gonna be how you put this into this view. Now, the other way you might do uh, do this is you wanna add a static area, which again, might be, you're gonna add, um, let's go to a hero image. So you might choose to add a hero image where it promotes signing up for your newsletter to make sure that they get that before they see the rest of the information. You might choose to add a pricing detail if they wanna to upgrade to any additional services. Um, you might choose to add a view of your team. And again, this is the static way to do this. When I set this up within our um, test portal, 
that I demonstrated at the top of the call here, we actually have this embedded from um, Airtable. So if I was to go over to the list view and actually pull up the team members that I had showed on that specific setup here, we're gonna find that these team members are actually driven by an Airtable integration. So I've got that pulled up here as employee demos. We've got name, notes, their bio, title, photo, phone, and then email. And how that then shows up in our software studio is just like this, because we've got our source being Airtable, we've got the base being the employee demos, table one, grid view, and then we've got the details down here that we move just to content. And we can see these are the different things that are being shown. And I could change if I wanted to say, this is email address. I do that and then suddenly over on the left hand side it says email address so again lots of possibilities here for what you need to do inside of software to make that client portal now what does this mean as you connect this with hubspot well there's a couple of things to think about and that is there's only a certain number of deals that are going to be available to you based on permissions so if that's possible and you're making your client portal with hubspot you're most likely going to need admin permissions to do that um, from a ticketing perspective, there's only going to be a certain amount of fields you can use to pull into software. So if I go into, let's say I'm going to show these tickets here, go in here and let's look at our data source. Let's look at all the different things I can use to filter. And I've got all of these specific things here. Now, if I want to add more data to this table, so I've got ticket name, tags, and create a date, and I want to add one more, let's go over to content. Let's add one more thing. And we're going to make this a, a text and then I can find what things inside of the ticket objects I can pull into this table. Now, again, these are the only things that are available. So if this is going to be your limitation, you need to think about that when you figure out what you want to present in your client portal. So if you need to make changes to any of this, for instance, like the ticket name right now might be something that, okay, ticket status. If I pull this down, the ticket status right now, um, if I put status here, it's gonna say, this is the status. So that's how to use software and HubSpot together to actually get the sign in pages and the sign out pages and the password. Go ahead and look at the software help documents and knowledge base. They have articles to help you with that. But I love this because it makes it possible for you to have a client portal using the information already in HubSpot and think about all the other things you could do with it. You could also have a view maybe for an external sales team of all the leads in progress that you don't have to give them access to your HubSpot necessarily to see that information. So with HubSpot as a data source inside of software, being a no code application, there's so many things you can do. They give you some of the tools to get started, but with the static and dynamic blocks you can pull in, you can make that software interface that you need to help grow your business. For more tips, tricks, and how to use, hit that subscribe button and we'll see you next week.